Hi, boys and girls, it's Miss Thomas here, and today our new storybook reader is Casey Pack. He is a high school teacher here at Maple Lake High School, and he will be reading us Casey at the Bat. I hope you enjoy. Hello, everybody. I'm going to take a few minutes of your time and read one of my favorite stories from my childhood growing up that I now get to read to my boys at bedtime, and that is Casey at the Bat. And it's one of my favorites, of course, because I am Casey Pack, high school math teacher, and my parents gave me this book when I was young, and I enjoy passing it on now to my boys and reading about Casey at the Bat. This is the story of a player who was the greatest of the great. He stood head and shoulders above all other players, a giant, a tower of strength, and a true pillar of his team. Strong as an ox, endowed with the winning smile and the abilities of 10 lesser men, he was adored by many a fan. He was none other than the mighty Casey of the Mudville Nine. This mighty Casey popped the stitches on more baseballs than most batters ever even hit. Whenever he came to the plate, he would always let the first two pitches go by on purpose. Strike one, strike two. But when time came for strike three, Casey would tire of toying with the pitcher. Grim determination would set in. He would grind his teeth together and his furious glare said he wanted to murder the ball. But then came the pitch. Casey swung his bat with the power of a hurricane. When Casey's back connected with the ball, hats flew off with the shock, and everyone ducked down low. Terrified birds flapped, and people's peanuts flew out of their bags. If the ball didn't simply explode into a small cloud of horsehide flakes, it was found far outside the stadium when it was found at all. It wasn't hard to prove which baseballs were from mighty Casey's hits. It'd be completely flattened by his mighty bat. Casey was great, but his team as a whole was a different story. Poor Flynn was always getting the bat tangled in his oversized mustache. The bat would spin in the wind and the confused Flynn would take off like an airplane. And as for Jimmy Blake, his nickname was Cake because he always crumbled at the plate. A favorite trick among other players was to stick a match in Jimmy Blake's shoe while he was at bat. Then they'd light it to wake him up. Blake got his only hits when his shoe was on fire. Mighty Casey was the hero of the team that fateful season when the Mudville Nine tied for first place. Ah, yes, it was a proud team. A little shaky if it weren't for Casey, but a mighty proud team just the same. Proudest of all, of course, was Casey himself. It was the day of the great championship game. I'll tell you the story as it was told to me. The outlook wasn't brilliant for the Mudville Nine that day. The score stood four to two, but with one more inning left to play. And then when Cooney died at first and Barrows did the same, a sickly silence fell upon the patrons of the game. A straggling few got up to go in deep despair. The rest clung to hope that which springs eternal in the human breast. They thought, if only Casey could get but a whack at that, we'd put up even money now with Casey at the bat. But Flynn preceded Casey, as did also Jimmy Blake, and the former was a Lulu and the latter was a cake. So upon that strict and multitude, grim melancholy sat, for there seemed but little chance of Casey's getting to the bat. Flynn let drive a single to the wonderment of all, and Blake the much despised tore the cover off the ball. And when the dust had lifted and the men saw what had occurred, there was Jimmy safe at second and Flynn a hugging third. Then from five thousand throats and more, there rose a lusty yell. It rumbled through the valley, it rattled in the dell. 
It knocked upon the mountain and recoiled upon the flats. Poor Casey, mighty Casey, was advancing to the bat. There was ease in Casey's manner as he stepped into his place. There was pride in Casey's bearing and a smile on Casey's face. And when responding to the cheers, he lightly doffed his hat. No stranger in the crowd could doubt it was Casey at the bat. Ten thousand eyes were on him as he rubbed his hands with dirt. Five thousand tongues applauded when he wiped them on his shirt. Then while the writhing pitcher ground the ball into his hip, defiance gleamed in Casey's eye, a sneer curled Casey's lip. Now the leather spheroid came hurtling through the air, and Casey stood a-watching in a haughty grandeur there. Close by the sturdy batsman, the ball unheeded sped. That ain't my style, said Casey. Strike one, the umpire said. From the benches black with people, there went up a muffled roar, like the beating of the storm waves on a stern and distant shore. Kill him! Kill the umpire! shouted someone in the stand. And it's likely they'd have killed him had not Casey raised his hand. With a smile of Christian charity, Casey's visage shone. He stilled the rising tumult. He bade the game go on. He signaled to the pitcher, and once more the spheroid flew. But Casey still ignored it, and the umpire said, Strike two. Fraud, cried the maddened thousands, and echoed answered, Fraud. But one scornful look from Casey, and the audience was awed. They saw the face grow stern and cold. They saw his muscles strain, and they knew that Casey wouldn't let the ball go by again. The sneer is gone from Casey's lip. His teeth are clenched in hate. He pounds with cruel violence, his back upon the plate. And now the pitcher holds the ball, and now he lets it go. And the air is shattered by the force of Casey's blow. Oh... Somewhere in this favored land, the sun is shining bright. The band is playing somewhere, and somewhere hearts are light. And somewhere men are laughing, and someone, somewhere children shout. But there is no joy in Mudville. Mighty Casey struck out. <laughs>